What if the future of farming looked like this? Dark, efficient, futuristic. The Blade Runner movie predicts we'll be farming insects in 2049, but it's not science fiction, it's happening now. Black soldier flies, or BSF, are an answer to many problems in our food chain. You give them food waste material, and they'll grow incredibly fast into a high quality protein, ideal for livestock and fish. And they produce frass, a powerful organic fertiliser. They're a sustainable and circular solution to many challenges, such as food waste, protein demand, food security and soil health. My name is David Taverner and I've spent the last year travelling the world learning from the best the BSF industry has to offer. I've visited over 50 businesses in 14 countries across four continents. I've visited in insect farms, met with academics, policy makers, corporates and investors, all the future leaders of this industry. I wanted to answer one big question in this small world. Does BSF farming have a future and how do we get there? I started my journey in Brazil where I came face to face with soybean agriculture. I learned that it's a vast and efficient industry which is deeply entrenched in global supply chains and I realised that insect protein has its work cut out if it wants to compete. My next stop was North America, then Europe. I found there is lots of investment in large scale insect facilities, especially in Europe. However, I had an uncomfortable feeling in my gut. Yes, some of the things I saw were mightily impressive, but vanity metrics drive the focus. Such as how amazing the technology is and how much volume is produced, but nothing is shared to help each other. Everything is kept secret to achieve solo gain. Not enough attention is spent on building profitable businesses to drive the industry forward. And there seemed a distinct lack of understanding for the customer. And these attitudes concerned me. Ultimately, the main industry challenge is that the cost of production is too high, especially in Europe and the UK, where you can buy soy meal for £340 a tonne, whereas the cost of production in the BSF meal for, in Europe sits at around £3,000 a tonne. So what drives the price? Firstly, regulations restrict what you can and cannot feed BSF, driving up the cost. Secondly, supply chains are immature and need time and money to develop. You think about chickens. In 1957, a 56-day-old chicken weighed 905 grams. By 2005, that same bird was over four kilos, thanks to investments over time in genetics, nutrition, and efficiency. Then there's demand. Too much of it is fake, built on grants, discounts, or trials that don't go anywhere. Yes, premium pet food brands will pay well, but the volumes remain small. We need to develop real sticky demand from happy customers who come back for more and tell their friends. And then on my journey, I went to South Africa where I saw things that gave me hope in the industry. After the fall of the world's first major insect producer, AgriProtein, in Cape Town, the leaders stayed in the industry and created their own spin-off companies. I saw lots of smaller businesses specialising in different activities within the supply chain. Fly breeding larvae rearing, tech provisions, offtake development, with science and government engaged. The zero waste to landfill policy for 2025 has mobilised this industry to work together. Biogas has been overlooked to make way for BSF. It's a fantastic case study of an ecosystem building the industry together. My final stop was East Africa and things looked refreshingly different. Here insect farms weren't built around crates or robotic arms. Many used open systems like polytunnels and self-harvesting pits, and they worked. With a warm climate, affordable labour, and minimal red tape, this region has a real head start. And I found that it's about playing to your strengths and utilising what you've got. So if we want to compete long term here in the UK, we should view BSF not just as a commodity, but as a circular economy tool solving problems within the wider food system. When I returned home, I still had to answer my question, does BSF farming have a future? So I ran the numbers, and it's good news, they add up. But only if we remove the barriers. We need to fix regulation, we need to build proper supply chains, and we need to create real customer demand. Do that, and this industry works. I'm not just reporting on this industry, I'm building it. This report is a guide for entrepreneurs 
investors and policymakers, but most importantly for doers. Thank you for watching, and thanks to the Nuffield Farming Scholarship Trust and Alan and Anne Beckett for their generous sponsorship.